Uh, good morning, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Minister, last night we saw the most moving emotional testimony that a person could witness, that of Mr. Praveen Halapanavar, talking about his wife Savita's life and her tragic death. It was truly harrowing, Minister. He also spoke about his concerns though, of an independent inquiry that the government is proposing. Now, Minister, the Tanishta met with the Indian ambassador. The Irish ambassador has met with the Indian government. Yet nobody from this government has met with Mr. Halapanavar. We now could have a situation where the government could be in open conflict with Savita's family in a court of law to try and access medical records or attain me medical records so that they can go on with an inquiry or an investigation that nobody wants or has any confidence in. Now, Minister, how can we continue with this investigation? The family don't want it. Some of your own colleagues don't want it at this stage. And our President has told you it is clearly wrong. Sorry, Deputy, we shouldn't engage the President in this. I, I don't intend to engage the President. I'm just Thank quoting what has been said. He is reflecting yeah, the views. Well, we shouldn't. Uh, we shouldn't uh, yes, but well, he's reflecting the views of the Irish the people. Constitution. The President said, my, my no, no, wish, no, no, frankly, no, no, is. The Constitution, respect the Constitutional position of the President. Well, Ken Corley, Thank just, you very much. Please proceed. He's just, he's, Thank he's you just reflecting the views yeah, of well, the Irish people. Yeah, well. And clearly, I'm saying that the government should listen. Now, Minister, what I'm calling on this government to do is for the Taoiseach to personally intervene and meet with Praveen to find out exactly what investigation would satisfy his concerns and that of his family. Everybody in this House wants to get to the truth of the matter. Everybody wants to find out what happened and what can be done to avoid such similar circumstances in the future. But quite clearly, Minister, nobody has confidence in this investigation. And I mean nobody. So I'm asking that the Taoiseach would intervene, sit down and discuss and come to an accommodation so that we, as a, as, as a parliament, are not seen to be in conflict with a man who has lost his husband, who we could be dragging through the courts to access or retain her medical records. It is just unsightly and unbelievable, Minister, Thank that you. we're still at this stage talking about this very tragic issue. How much more must this family endure to try and come to the truth of what happened Savita in Galway. Minister, ask the Taoiseach to intervene in a personal, human way, without the cameras, without the microphones, and sit down and try and find an accommodation that everybody can be satisfied with. Thank you, uh, Minister. Um, first of all, uh, I've read and heard the comments made uh, by Uthran Naharan. I want to say they're considerate, thoughtful, sorry, Deb, reflective sorry, Minister, and humane. Under Article 1381 yeah. of the Constitution, the President is not answerable to the Dáil, so please respect yeah. that. Thank you. The, um, the spokesperson raised the issue, well, and I'm, I just I'm, want to I'm, say I'm that, that in relation to the President's comments. That's all I wish to say in relation to that. Uh, just let me say um, that the issue here, and anybody who has uh, heard uh, Mr. Halapanavar speaking uh, or being interviewed on television last night could not fail to be moved by what must be the immensity of his grief and his shock and his trauma at what happened to his wife. And anyone who has sat beside uh, a loved one as they uh, die uh, would know that the kind of experience that he has had must be enormously and tremendously difficult for him. And that is why I think the thoughts of everybody in Ireland, from the first citizen to every other citizen, is with him and with his family and friends in Ireland and in India. Let me say uh, that the HSE is responsible for appropriate inquiry when deaths occur in hospitals which require investigation. And that with reference to your uh, reference to the records of the HSE, the HSE, like any other institution or hospital, or indeed any institution, is legally responsible for the proper maintenance of records. Um, obviously, um, the, uh, Mr. Halapanavar's legal advisor 
has expressed views in relation to that, but I think you would know as a health spokesperson that the HSE also has responsibilities in relation to records. But let us, let us cut to the net point. This is about the safety and the care of women so that this episode or some tragic happening like this does not occur again. So this is what uh, it's about. It's about the care, protection and safety of women uh, when in hospital in relation to childbirth and in relation to pregnancy. And it's the duty of the HSE to find out and see in relation to that hospital if there were unsafe practices and that those practices uh, would be amended and strengthened so that women uh, going into that hospital or indeed any other hospital in this country uh, could be assured that their safety and care is the primary consideration and that structures are in place uh, in relation uh, to that. Just let me say as well, uh, and I welcome the fact that you suggest that this should not take place in a controversial adversarial mode. Uh, given the grief of her husband, which is so understandable to everybody, nobody wants to add any additional pr pressure or stress uh, to that grief uh, that he is undergoing. I think it's important uh, that he would understand that that's the view, I think, of everybody Thank you. Uh, in this House. Now, the. Uh, the, the chairman uh, of the uh, inquiry, uh, Professor Sir Saba Ratnam um, Arul uh, Kumaran, uh, is an internationally, uh, internationally renowned expert. He is entirely independent. Uh, secondly, the other members of the uh, team, uh, the inquiry team, uh, are also nationally and internationally renowned. It is important from the point of view of the safety of women uh, that it's established uh, what happened and that if hospitals in Ireland Thank need you, to move immediately to make appropriate provision in relation to securing the safety and well-being of women, that should be done. Uh, and that, I think, uh, Deputy, is the most important issue, as well as tending as best we can as a country to the grief uh, of her husband Thank and you. her family. Uh, Deputy. Well, Minister, the, the government has obligations and duties as well. Uh, the HSE can look after itself in terms of its own inquiry. But quite clearly, the family of Savita are not going to cooperate with a HSE investigation. So you're going to have open conflict. There is going to be huge difficulties placed on this family in trying to get to the truth of what happened to Savita in Galway. Now, Minister, we do not want to raise this in a political adversarial way, but we certainly don't want the state to be in an adversarial way with the bereaved family. And that clearly is what's going to happen. So, Minister, look, I'm just asking for one last time for personal intervention behind the scenes for the Taoiseach to meet with Praveen and the family and legal uh, representatives to find out some way of addressing the concerns in a meaningful way that will establish the truth and will also satisfy the family about its independence. And a commission of inquiry could be that way. The HSC will carry out its own investigation anyway with regard to its internal workings. But what we want to do is try and establish a commission that will satisfy everybody. And clearly, Minister, the, your response will not satisfy uh, Praveen family or the broader Irish public. Thank you. So I'm just urging you, Minister, one last time, please, for the, the behind the scenes uh, discussions with Praveen and the family to try and, and find a way and a mechanism to deal with this and our suggestion of a commission of inquiry. And this won't prejudice the outcome of anything. Thank you. Thank you. The Taoiseach is quite entitled and should meet with Praveen and the family to discuss their concerns. In fact, it should have already happened. Minister. Can I just say that every effort uh, will be made by the government to do everything that we can to support um, Savita's husband uh, in his uh, understandable uh, deep, deep grief. Uh, we heard him speak last night. I don't think anybody who heard him speak could fail but to be moved by it. But can I just say, and you acknowledge there yourself, that the hospital and the HSE must know what happened 
so that they can ensure, so that they can ensure immediately that there are no further risks to the life of women in hospital. That, as well as supporting her grieving family, that is also something that is owed to the women of Ireland and that the women of Ireland want, Deputy. You may disagree, but the safety of women in a hospital during pregnancy, during delivery, and in the unfortunate event of a miscarriage, which happens at an early stage in a very high proportion of pregnancies, it is most important that we give reassurance to the women of Ireland and their families and their friends and partners that they are as safe as possible in our hospitals. That is one of the focuses of what the government is doing, as well as assisting the family and the husband of Sophita as well as we can. And all options, Deputy, are open. Just let me say to you, you're speaking there about a commission of inquiry. Can I just caution a word that this chamber should not rush down the legal adversarial road at this point? When Judge Moriarty first started on his tribunal, he said that it would be finished within 12 months. In fact, it took almost 13 years. Now, we also have had, Thank you. On, number, on numerous occasions, both when you were in government and indeed on, uh, on occasion since this government has been formed, uh, ministerial inquiries. Now, if you want to go the road of a full tribunal, you are really talking. Just, just, just let me tell you. Sorry, we're, we're, you we're made over time, reference. Please, this is an endless question. Thank you. You made reference. Over time, Minister. You made reference to you. You made reference to a commission. You made reference to a commission of inquiry. Can I just say that I think we need to focus on the safety and welfare of women. In that context, in that context, anybody who is responsible for running an institution like a hospital has a responsibility to find out as quickly as possible, if only on health and safety grounds, to see is there something you, that needs to be done or amended to actually increase the safety and protection of women who are in delivery, who have gone in in the context of a miscarriage, or who are otherwise being cared for in the context of pregnancy? Thank you. I'd ask uh, people, uh, members to please uh, understand that there's a time limit, and I am obliged to ask members to adhere to that time limit. Deputy Minister, at the outset, I think your reference to the Moriarty Tribunal is hardly an appropriate analogy. Minister, people across Ireland, and no doubt by now across the world, have been moved by the calm, dignified, but yet powerful testimony on the primetime programme last night of Pravin Halapanavar. And he told us directly of the terrible ordeal that his wife, Sunita, had been, Savita, had been subjected to an ordeal, make no mistake about it, that no other woman should ever have to face on these shores. And yet, despite all that he has been through, he still told us that he loved Ireland. But above all, he made it very, very clear to all watching, to all listening, that he and his family have no confidence in a HSE inquiry. We need to listen to what he has told us. We need to be very, very clear about this. Can I ask the Minister, what efforts have been employed by the Minister for Health or his department, by the HSE, by Antija, to make direct contact with Praveen Halapanavar prior to the announcement of the inquiry, or indeed since. I was in attendance at the Health and Children Committee meeting on Tuesday when the director-designate of the HSE, Tony O'Brien, indicated and appealing to the media there present at the meeting to use their good offices to inform Mr. Halapanavar that he would welcome contact from him. Now, I have to say, you know, this is 
totally inappropriate. And yesterday, the Taoiseach used the opportunity here as well of this doll chamber to communicate with Praveen and his family. I'd like to know if any serious efforts have been employed, if any offer has been extended for an Taoiseach to meet directly with Praveen Alapanavo, as I believe should now happen, and as I have already urged this morning Thank in you. the course of Morning Ireland's uh, attention to this issue. Can I ask, um, will this effort now be undertaken by government? Will an Taoiseach make that direct uh, approach to Mr Halapanavar and sit down with him to address the issues concerned? And will the government accept that we are in an impossible situation here if this inquiry is to have any credibility, if it is to be able to carry out its function, and part of its function must be to restore you, public confidence and, above all, confidence in the women of Ireland. I urge that a full, independent inquiry be undertaken. Thank you. Minister. Just uh, again to say that there are two important issues here. Whatever comfort and support um, this state and the government can <coughs> offer to Mr. Halapanavar and his family, and his uh, dignity, uh, his uh, willingness to speak despite his appalling grief, and the way he expressed himself, his courteous references to Ireland, to Irish institutions, I think he is to be commended for all of that. Uh, he appears to be a deeply courteous man. In fairness, uh, when uh, the uh, news of this uh, was first broadcast in the media, um, there was an expression uh, that communication was to be via his legal advisor. And in fact, his legal advisors, or advisor has, I think, done a number of interviews setting out the position in relation to his client. I can assure you that every effort uh, will be made and every appropriate response will be made uh, by the government uh, in respect to any way in which Mr Halapanavar and his family can be supported. But I want to say, Deputy, and I think you would agree, that when a death occurs in a hospital uh, which uh, requires investigation and inquiry, the reason that that happens is from a health and safety point of view to ensure that no unsafe practices have occurred which would put uh, further patients at risk. That's the general uh, approach in this matter. Taking into account the sensitivities of the matter, not just for the family of the bereaved and the husband of the bereaved, but for, I think, so many people in this country, particularly women. The government appointed an internationally renowned expert and a panel of experts. We also have the statement uh, by the former and much renowned master of Hollis Street, Dr. Boylan, supporting an inquiry which would be held expeditiously and quickly and my understanding is that the ambition in relation to the inquiry uh, which is underway is that it would be completed on a preliminary basis before Christmas. I think, uh, Deputy, that I would exercise caution at this point in going into a longer vista. There are provisions for ministerial inquiries. It's happened under previous governments. It's happened already under this government. But in relation to the health and safety aspect of the management of hospitals, it's my sincere view that you need to find out quite quickly in order to ensure that there is no endangerment to any woman or their child in relation to practices in our maternity hospitals. That does not, by the way, preclude further detailed inquiries. But I have to say myself, in terms of hospital incidents, uh, establishing the facts, uh, establishing health and safety considerations uh, as quickly as possible are paramount. 
But in addition to seeking to do that, Thank the you. government has appointed <coughs> very renowned independent experts uh, to actually carry out this particular inquiry as, expeditiously as uh, expeditiously as possible. It does not rule out anything else. Thank Remember you, the issue here is why did a healthy young woman who was unfortunately miscarrying an early term baby, she went into hospital. All of the indications from what we read in the media are that she was miscarrying and medicine could not stop the miscarriage. That seems to be the indications. And of course, in Irish hospitals, the Thank staff you. would move uh, to, if possible, prevent the miscarriage so the baby could be carried successfully to term. The normal practice, as I would understand it, most women would understand, Thank you, is that at a certain point there would be a DNC and uh, the woman uh, would, and in fact, the reason for that, by the way, Minister, you're way would be over that time. the family would, you please would the be chair? able Thank to you. go on to have further children. Now, it is important from a health and safety point of view that we have an answer as expeditiously as possible as to what happened so that women are not further endangered in any way, that we get an explanation. The women of Ireland, as well as the Halapanaver family, are owed that explanation and that check on safety as quickly as possible. Uh, Deputy O'Kellan, well, you one minute, Deputy. Thank Minister, you. how can you stand up here this morning and claim that it was your intention and is your intention to act expeditiously? That holds no water. The fact of the matter is, but that Pravin Halapanavar had actually taken the decision some two weeks after this terrible tragedy to go public, and because no efforts were being employed by the HSE or the authorities in relation to the tragic death of his wife. We have to say that it is reasonable for people to question whether any kind of serious inquiry would ever have been undertaken but for the fact that Mr. Halep Banaver had gone public with this terrible, terrible story that he has had to share with us. And that is an indictment of the system, of the HSE, Question, of the please. department and of this government. And I want to say to you, make no mistake about it, there is no possible credibility for the inquiry currently constituted, and that is not to question the uh, capacity, the suitability or otherwise of those now named to participate. We have a question, it is please. to recognise that without Praveen Halapanavar's cooperation and perhaps uh, approval for access to all of the critical uh, file notes in relation to his wife's tragic experience, that this particular Sorry, Deputy, inquiry can I ask a question, please, a supplementary question. will have Thank no you. future. I'm asking you, Minister, will you, A, as I'd asked you earlier, use your good offices to uh, impact with Antishuk, that he will appreciate the importance of direct contact with Mr. Halapanavar, that that is essential now, no matter what is to happen subsequently, Thank you. and that there is undoubtedly a huge demand, and it's not confined Sorry, to would the you voices please of ask opposition a way over for time. a public. Thank you. Well, I don't have that hand. Count Corley, that the minister was able to employ several times sorry, a moment sorry, ago. Yeah. I want to finish my sentence. Easily. Will you take on board the demands also of opposition and government voices for a full independent inquiry into this terrible, terrible event? And that is in the interest only of truth and justice. One minute to reply. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to, let, let, to say uh, to the deputy, that I don't think the tone, um, the adversarial tone, is appropriate. I have doubts, I have doubts, Deputy, that your suggestions uh, that this would be a full independent commission of inquiry with a heavy input of lawyers on all sides is exactly what this country needs at this point. I would remind you that when Judge Moriarty entered in good faith into his inquiry, he said it would happen within 12 months. Now just let me say that the government has moved, 
the important, the important issue here is women's health. It's not politics, it's women's health. And I hope that you will accept that I and other women have a direct interest in this. And that I say what I say out of personal conviction that there are young women going into hospital today, this week and next week. And I want to know that they are safe and what has happened will not happen again. Well, can I Thank just you. suggest that while you are interested, you. Deputy, and I acknowledge this, first of all, Mr. Halepinar took the very brave decision to go public. It is as a consequence of him going public uh, that we know what we now know, and he is to be congratulated for doing that. Thank you, Minister. But what we have to do is to find out as quickly as possible are there procedures in that hospital that in any way endanger the life and the health of women. We need to know that. And we need that, I would put it to you, Deputy, as expeditiously, expeditiously as possible for the women of Ireland. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Shane Ross. <coughs> Thank you, Cancola. Cancola, last week, the Taoiseach, in answer to a question here from me, very graciously agreed that there was a case for judges making declarations of their interests. And that was in response to a judge having recused himself for a case, from a case when he held shares in CRH. Judges are in the spotlight, and I'd like to ask the minister a question. This week, a judge from the district court was convicted of a serious offence for the first time in the history of the state. Now, Kankola, I am not going to comment on that case uh, specifically, except to ask that in the light of the fact that the judiciary is being proved to be accident prone, and that no judge has ever been impeached by the house, houses of the Eructus, and it is almost impossible to dismiss a judge in this country. I'd like the Minister to answer this question. What procedures are in place to ensure that judges, and particularly of the district court, are properly vetted before they get these jobs. It is quite obvious that the most important qualification is political, uh, political influence or the political colour of a judge when, when they are appointed. And I'd like the Minister to tell me, apart from the Judicial Advisory Board, how, are, are judges subject to interview? Are they subject to questions? Do they need any qualifications whatsoever apart from having a basic legal qualification. Because it's important that we avoid the sort of incidents that have happened here and we take precautions to ensure that judges have a past which qualifies them for the jobs and are not sim simply qualified politically. Minister. Um, well, Kian Corla, I, I may be advised by you in the context um, of the case which is before the courts. I wouldn't go there. Uh, I would think, Deputy, it would be extremely unwise I for me to comment there. in any way on the circumstances that you have referred to. The matter is before the courts. Uh, this, this House uh, may have certain legal responsibilities in certain areas. I think it would be extremely unwise uh, for me to comment. Uh, I understand in relation to the uh, question of judges' interests uh, that the Taoiseach in his previous reply um, undertook uh, to have uh, a conversation, discussion uh, with the uh, Minister for Justice. Um, there are various proposals uh, before uh, the Minister for Justice in relation to the organisation of the courts and in relation to the regulation of judicial matters. But I just want to say that there is a separation, correctly, uh, between this House and the judiciary, and it would be unwise of me, I believe, to comment in any detail on the court case that you have referred to.
Can I call it? This is absolute and utter, utterly ridiculous. I'm not asking for a comment, and we haven't asked for a comment, and I specifically said I didn't want a comment on that court case. I am asking how district court judges are vetted as a general, as a general rule before they get the job. And it seems to me that the refusal of the government to answer these questions means that the old political jobbery. Sorry, sorry, please, please. You have to be a member of the party. You have to be a member of the government party. I don't wish to tread into territory which is delicate, and I deliberately did not do so. I ask how these people are vetted. Because they do not, I'll answer some of that question myself, they do not have to be interviewed. They do not have to answer specific questions. They, it is an advantage to have a political, a, a, a Sorry, political yes, affiliation. Yes, well and would the minister give me an assurance? Yes, Sorry, Deputy. Deputy we're actually straying into dangerous territory here. Sorry. Sorry, would you please? Yes. And would the I'm minister give, give me the, an assurance? The Deputy some guidance here. We're straying into very difficult areas. There's strict rules in relation to the discussion judiciary. You're, in my opinion, you're entitled to ask how people are appointed. Yeah. But we can't imply any wrongdoing in the oh, relation to no. no, no. There's a, a incident. I am simply there, there's a standing order dealing with impeachment yeah. if you wish to check it. Thank I'm you. simply asking, can call it, yes. that as a minister in a reforming government, that she will give me an assurance she will give me an assurance that the Labour Party, at least, is committed to removing the appointment of ju judges and the naked appointment of judges out of the political arena. That's a very good question, Shane. The, um, the deputy is well aware. We need a chorus, thank you. We don't need a chorus. That there is an application. That there is an application. You love the responsibility of it. There, the deputy is aware that there is an application and appointments process in relation to the appointment of members of the judiciary at any level and that there are certain conditions in relation to the qualifications and experience of those persons who apply to be considered for judicial application. I want to stress again that in the context of the court case which the deputy referred to, I think it is deeply unwise at this point, deputy, to have a discussion of this matter. It may be, sorry, it may be appropriate. Just, just, it may be appropriate. It may be appropriate at a later stage when court proceedings have been completed uh, to have a debate, but I would strongly suggest uh, that we would not discuss this or related matters at this point here this morning. Here, here, here. 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 Here, here.